What's up, folks? Welcome to your week eight recap. Hell yeah, week eight. Represent week eight. What a great day of football. Come on, Dave. It was a great day. It represented. <laughs> okay. All right. I, best, best day of the fantasy season, I believe. Oh, it it's, had to be. it's great for a number of reasons. No doubt about it. So represent, yo. So here are the amount of 30 fantasy point PPR, 30 PPR fantasy point scores, not including quarterbacks, just flex options in all eight weeks. Four, eight in week two, two, five, five, two, three, and nine so far with two games left. So we have the most 30 point scores outside of the quarterbacks. We also had four 30 point quarterbacks today. So a total of 13. 30 fantasy point scores in PPR, six point for passing touchdown leagues. Great week. And fingers crossed, no major injuries. Cooper Cup did hurt his ankle in the final minutes of the game. No idea the severity, but all things considered, pretty good week. And you know what, Heath? I, I have to apologize. If anybody just heard Heath, uh, he's sick. He's, he's fighting through it. We do appreciate that, but I don't want to overstep here. I don't think you should go trick-or-treating on Monday. I don't even think you should... Give out candy to the neighborhood kids. I don't want them getting them sick. Did this you is really to... tough for me, but Take what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and I've heard people do this. I'm going to turn all the lights off outside. I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to turn all the inside lights off, and I'm going to sit in the dark and watch football and write the week nine previews and ignore anybody that knocks on the door. Yeah, you have my blessing this year to be the Grinch. <laughs> and I just want to apologize to anybody who hears me sucking on a cough drop, sneezing, or coughing, or sounds like I'm underwater. I'm trying. And I appreciate it, honestly. Uh, we, you know, you're fighting through it. So let's talk about the biggest winner. Dave Richard, who's the biggest winner of Fantasy Week 8? The biggest winner of Fantasy Week 8? I mean, there, there's a bunch of studs and, like, mega studs that you could certainly look at. But I think we've got a top 12 quarterback in Justin Fields. He's the guy that was able to put up some good passing numbers and some touchdowns and run the football. It wasn't Daniel Jones. It wasn't Malik Willis. It wasn't Sam Ellinger. It was Justin Fields, and he's given us at least 18 fantasy points each of the last four games and over 20 in each of the past two. And he did it against Dallas. And, you know, they, uh, they've been so good defensively. They were giving up the fourth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, 12 to Brady, 17 to Burrow, uh, 20 to Jalen Hurts, and 30 to Justin Fields, who is 49% uh, rostered, and he gets... Uh, the Miami Dolphins and the Detroit Lions, and they played each other. And then the Falcons, the, the schedule is incredible. So we hope you beat the waiver wire. Dolphins, Lions, Falcons, Jets, Packers, bye. After that, you're not going to want to use them against the Eagles and the Bills. But if you're still playing and the fantasy championship is on the line in week 17 at Detroit, woo. Yeah. So Justin Fields, hopefully you beat the waiver wire. Um, Heath, who's the biggest loser of fantasy week eight? Oh, you're muted. You were coughing, so you muted yourself. There we go. That's all yeah, right. That's going to happen a lot. I'm going to say the Colts pass catchers, not because Sam Ellinger was was super bad. Um, he did a few good things, but it looks pretty clear to me. They played from behind in most of this game. They did take a two-score lead at one point in the fourth quarter, but they were extremely run-heavy. It looked very much more like what they've done the past two seasons as opposed to what they were doing with Matt Ryan. And I just don't think if Michael Pittman's not going to earn a 32% target share, and as well as Paris Campbell and Alec Pierce have played recently, I don't expect he will, that there's probably not going to be a guarantee of more than six or seven targets for anybody in this pass offense moving forward. Well, hold on a sec. Didn't Pittman have like a 40% target share today? Nine he, targets, 23 pass attempts. He, he may have had a 40. I, I'm not going to project that to continue, but he may have had a 40% no, target. No, of course not. No. I, I I tend to agree that it's going to be harder to feel great about Pittman. And certainly he's going to be a bust based on where we drafted him as long as Ellinger's the quarterback. Yeah, and I think people aren't going to be feeling great about Jonathan Taylor. We should talk about, we can talk about him here as a, I don't know if he's a loser. He had 16 carries, but he only had one target. He had no catches. He, uh, he, he got stuff at the goal line. He also, he could have had a touchdown, but Naeem Hines got the carry. But what, well, what do you think about well, Taylor? Heath? Early in that game, he had, I think, a 28-yard run, which was his longer, longest run in the game, and immediately hobbled over to the sideline and had to have his ankle yep. taped again. Yep. I, don't th I don't think Jonathan Taylor ever got healthy. Yeah, um, and man, the running back position is so different now with ETN and, and Walker and Pierce. You know, They didn't have great games, but they both scored. 
So I, I, I is he even a must start going I, I forward? Ran, I ran the Twitter poll last week and we all laughed about it because 40% of people said they'd rather have Travis Etienne than Jonathan Taylor rest of the season. If I ran it right now, 90% of people would take Travis Etienne over Jonathan Taylor. I think it's the true. Ellinger, I think the Ellinger change is is bad for him. Do you? I don't know how much of it was bad because of him being not at a hundred percent. Yeah. And he, I look, he had his opportunity to score later on in the game. And I, I, I don't think we're going to see any games where he's just running away for 175 yards and three touchdowns. So he's probably not at a hundred percent. The offensive line isn't very good. The quarterback is going to get dared to throw every single time he drops back. He's not going to see a ton of targets. They have the Patriots next week in New England. It's not going to be easy for them. I, I what was our bet last week? Didn't we make a bet on Walker yeah, versus? But I changed Taylor? it. I changed my mind when they made the quarterback change. My whole thing was in PPR. They were throwing Matt Ryan was throwing so much to his running back, so much in general, throw so much short area stuff. It was mm-hmm. good for Taylor, but he got one target today. You know, this is just, and and they don't have a good enough oh. offensive line for them to ground and pound. I mean, I, I think this is an important thing to talk about. Let's do it right now. Here's their schedule before their week 14 bye. Patriots, Raiders, Eagles, Steelers, Cowboys. How many easy matchups did you hear in there for, for Jonathan Taylor? One. One. Maybe two. Yeah. Maybe two of you count Pittsburgh. That looks like a low-scoring field goal fest if there ever would be one. Najee Harris and Jonathan Taylor in the RB bus bowl in week 12. <laughs> Uh, you, you may want to, I, I don't want to tell people to sell low on Jonathan Taylor, but if you can find a team, maybe a winning team, that's going to be eight, no, or seven and one. And they think they're getting the first round pick Jonathan Taylor and you get some pretty good value for him on a deal. I think you want to consider it given their schedule coming up. Okay. But you know, but I I don't want to, we don't want to be completely too negative on him here. He's still what a second round caliber player. I don't know. Yeah. Because he easily could have had two touchdowns today. But All right. And Ell- Ellen Gurr, of course. Ellen I think Gurr. if it was easy, he would have done it. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, you can read all about it in the newsletter, cbssports.com slash newsletters. Check it out, the Fantasy Football Today newsletter. There are a lot of newsletters that we have for you. Of course, we're talking to you about the Fantasy Football Today one, but check them all out, cbssports.com slash newsletters. It's great stuff. All right, the big news, Cooper Cup left in the fourth quarter with an ankle, probably an ankle injury. <clears throat> uh, Jamar Chase is not going to go on IR, so that's good and bad. I'm sure you'd like to stash him in an IR st- spot, but hopefully he won't be out that long. And then a few players left in return. Tyler Higby. Can we get a snap count on Higby? Because he had a terrible game. I know he left briefly. Sure. He played uh, quite a bit in the second half, I think. I don't think it was I just I believe that. he did, too. Yeah. Okay. He had a bad drop in the second half. Oh, he did. You're right. Oh, man, he had a huge Stinged game. Play. Should have had a huge gain, minimum. Yeah. Uh, 40 of 56 snaps. I'm not going to do the math, but it's going to be a little under 80% of the snaps. Uh, Matthew Stafford left and came back. Adam Thielen left and came back. Mark Ingram left with an injury. Jonathan Taylor left and came back. Jamal Williams is the goal line back. <laughs> DeAndre Swift is someone that might get lost in what was a pretty explosive week. Uh, he caught a touchdown. He had very little work, and we'll talk about him when we get to that game. Uh, Geno Smith had a good game. He had 22 fantasy points. He played great. He could have had a huge game. His receivers did not help him out. They had a lot of almost touchdowns in that game, but it was a, it was at least a good game for Geno. Uh, Chase Claypool threw a touchdown pass, and I learned, I don't know if you guys knew this, that he is left-handed. I did not know that about Chase Claypool. Uh, Devontae Parker is one of the few players who did leave with an injury and did not come back. And Philadelphia defensive tackle Jordan Davis has a high ankle sprain. Michael Michael Parsons had a ridiculous touchdown on a fumble recovery, as good as Justin Fields was. Don't leap over the guy who <laughs> just recovered the fumble. Uh, silly. And those are pretty much your main injuries. So, guys, let's talk about the mega studs. Better than mega duds, right? Here's the 30-point club. Six point per passing touchdown, full PPR. There were 13 players who scored 30 fantasy points. Four of them were quarterbacks. Those quarterbacks were Jalen Hurts, 36. Tua Tunga Bailoa, 34. Kyler and Fields, 30. Uh, your scoring might be a little bit different, decimals, whatnot, but Tua, Hurts, Kyler, Fields, 
We already talked about Fields, Dave. Highlight someone else in that group. How about Tua Tungavailoa, who threw for 382 yards and three touchdowns? I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that he was playing the Lions, and he had the middle of the field open all game long. But I think he threw the ball a lot better than he did in the previous week. So it makes me feel a little bit better about starring, starting to a moving forward um, when he's got, for example, the Bears in Chicago next week. It's going to be a tougher matchup for him than Detroit. The Browns after that shouldn't be too much tougher than Chicago might even be easier. And then a bye, and then after the bye, it's Houston. So I think you're looking at another top 12 quarterback. We, I said it with Justin Fields. I certainly have to be encouraged by what Tua Tungavailoa did. Next three weeks, I think he's in that – well, four weeks because there's a bye in there. Three of the next four because you're not starting to do the bye. Top 12 quarterback. Uh, would you guys rather have Tua or Kyler Murray, both in the 30-point club, going forward? Tua or Kyler? I'll still take Kyler. I think I'll take I think I'll take Tua because I'm worried about that downside for Kyler. Not that Tua doesn't have downside either, but I think his matchups are going to be a little bit tougher. He's he's got three straight in division against Seattle, the Rams, and San Francisco in the next three weeks. Okay. Um yeah, I, I you know I'm all right. I'll leave it at that. I was gonna ask you to follow up on Tua, but that's okay. Good time to talk about him. Let's talk about the running backs in the thirty point club. Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey. Kamara actually outscored McCaffrey. Kamara uh, had a huge game, two receiving, one rushing. McCaffrey had the triple crown, rushing, receiving, and passing touchdown in this game, but they both scored over 40 points in PPR. Derrick Henry has now, what, five straight games with 132 or more total yards. He, it's, it's incredible. Three straight games with 28 or more carries. Uh, Tony Pollard and Deontay Foreman. Kamara, McCaffrey, Henry, Pollard, and Foreman. Heath, break down the running backs. Well, I think the most interesting one is Deontay Foreman because we don't know what's going to happen once Chuba Hubbard comes back. That was one of my believe it or nots for this week. Believe it or not, Deontay Foreman is a must-start running back even when Chuba Hubbard comes back. I think he is. I think he's the number two running back. I think he has to be for the first week because it's hard to believe the Panthers saw that performance and want to go back to giving Chuba Hubbard the ball more than him. True, um, but they did they did give Brown and Blackshear some work. So yeah. they clearly believe in using multiple backs, and it sounds like Chuba's going to make his way back for the matchup against Cincinnati. And it'll be a tough matchup. I, I still like Cincinnati's run defense, but uh, the way that Foreman's running right now, fantasy managers should feel pretty good about it's it. It's really hard to quantify the hair bouncing on the shoulder pads. Um, it's just, it's an edge that you really can't, uh, overcome, but it makes you think of Lynch. You know, first of all, with the Bengals next week, we got to see if they get DJ reader back. He's not playing this week. He hasn't played since week three. He makes an enormous difference in their run defense, but, um, uh, oh, for, like, he was, he was pretty good at the end of last year. He wasn't great, but he got so much work. I think know? people forget that like, they showed a graphic of the last however many 2,000-yard rushers in college, and Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard were both on there. Wow. Uh, I think people forget before the Achilles injury, like, he had some really good pedigree. Mm -hmm. He was a, a very good running back, and he, he did run hard and good at times last year. And, I mean, if you don't like him against the Bengals, the great news is he gets the Falcons again in two weeks. Mm. Uh, Tony Pollard still does not have a game in his career with more than 14 carries. That's as many as he had today, 14, but he only needed that to get 131 yards and three touchdowns. And we'll see what happens, Dave. I mean, does he have a, a more even split with Zeke? Does he take over? Who's the best running back in their backfield after they come off their bye in week nine? You know, Jerry Jones said after the game that he said, as, as Zeke goes, we go. Some, some kind of mess like that which it's so hard to believe because you watch Pollard play he's just way more explosive certainly the much better back and he proved that he can handle short yardage work as well as having breakaway runs how do they get away from that especially when Zeke isn't nearly as explosive so I don't if it's you know I'm not the coach and I don't know what they're looking at with Zeke or if it's an edict from Jerry Jones saying you know feed Zeke or if they want to try and keep Tony Pollard fresh for their playoff run. But I, I, I can't help but think that Tony Pollard has to find at least a dozen touches every single week. And if that if, if that's what's been happening lately, and if that continues to happen, you won't regret starting him in your fantasy leagues. Yeah, I mean, you can't trade him. Right? Everybody knows. It's not even – it just hold him? Just hold Tony I Pollard? Don't, I don't know. You might be able to trade him. 
Would you want you could, so, uh, so much upside if he can? Maybe Zeke's injury lingers. You know, it's his third year in a row with a knee injury. Yeah, yeah, right? but they've got to buy for it to heal up a little bit more, and then oh, they've got so some important tricky. NFC matchups coming up after that. But nothing with it. They don't have what's their toughest opponent left on the schedule? Eagles. I think it's Philadelphia, but that's in Week 16, Adam. So they might be able to. They might be able to do whatever they want for the six games after the bye. And they could certainly put Pollard out there. Yes, I think Pollard is going to be someone you have to consider as a number two running back. Just maybe a boom bust number two, but somebody that you've got to consider putting in your line. As a flex, there's no question. Give him your flex spot. I do think that there is at least a a 20 or 30% chance that he's Kareem Hunt and that we are two weeks away from. Why did Tony Pollard just have five touches? Is that really? Uh, I don't know. Has that happened with him? He's had usually get, five with like, eight, eight, and the answer is yes. Yeah, it's so annoying. I mean, everybody knows it except for Jerry Jones. He probably knows it too. But he knows yeah, it. He, he wants to get as, something out of Zeke. We go as far as Zeke goes, and that's going to be out of the first round of the playoffs because you're one of your best players is not getting enough touches. Uh maybe. But hold on a second. Heath has always done a great job of explaining what the Cowboys' pass offense is and how they like to spread the ball around and use multiple players, and there isn't anybody who regularly gets double-digit targets. That was his argument against CeeDee Lamb. It's a smart thing that they're doing, and theoretically, that's what they're doing at running back. They're going to use both the guys to try and keep them both fresh because they know they're going to need them both for no. the rest of the season. Uh, then switch the roles. Get Let Pollard be Zeke and let Zeke get eight but carries. I think the difference is, and there is something to this, there are backs who have proven the ability to handle 300 touches over a full season. There are backs who have not. And obviously, Zeke's one of those who has, and Tony Pollard's one of those who's not. I think there's a little bit of risk at this point in the season to start exposing Tony Pollard to 18 touches a week and just thinking, oh, he's fine. He can do it. Well, fine. Then give him 15 touches a week and just, you know, fine. But he's better than he's better than Zeke. Everybody knows that, right? Can we at least sure. agree that he's better than Zeke? And Zeke, to be honest with you, he hit, he has shown three years in a row that he cannot withstand that workload. He played through it two years ago. Um, last year, he missed time. Oh, no, he didn't miss time. No, he, last he, year he played playing, through it. He keeps playing through it, but he plays hurt and he plays poorly. Anyway, let's go to the wide receivers. A.J. Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddle, all over 30 fantasy points. Heath Brown, Hopkins, Tyreek, and Waddle. Do you see any sell highs here or do you just see studs? I think I just see studs. I, I think Brown's a top five wide receiver. I think Hopkins, uh, Hill's a top five wide receiver. Hopkins and Waddle are top 12 wide receivers. All right. So I mean, while we were watching Brown, though, he, he, uh, you know, I, I, Brown's a top five wide receiver because that, you know, he wasn't going into this game. I think he was no. like 15th. No, I don't think he's a top five receiver, but I think he's a top he 12 ish receiver. Oh, you could now. consider you could make the case for selling high on AJ Brown because he had a the best game of his career uh against the Steelers defense that couldn't get any pressure on Jalen Hurts and Hurts was playing out of his mind. A couple of those touchdown throws to AJ Brown were unreal throws. It's it's that he's not going to do this again. This is the best game that AJ Brown's going to have this year. So in theory, you could sell high on him. The other guy that I was going to bring up was Hopkins who once upon a time I thought was a sell high without him even playing a game. Now uh, now I'm wearing the clown suit on that one, but it's because he's getting crazy targets. His touchdown was unbelievable. That one-handed snare, love that. And so I brought it up today while we were watching the games about how, how dumb I felt for suggesting that you should have traded him before he even came back. And I think it was RJ, our, our editor, who turned to me and he said, well, if people didn't sell high on him then, maybe they should sell high on him now because that schedule gets harder for Arizona, because Kyler Murray isn't exactly the picture of a fantastic quarterback. And maybe you could turn DeAndre Hopkins into one of those elite wide receivers, or better yet, one of those elite running backs, because he's been playing so dang well in two games. And I thought to myself, that that's something that I could consider suggesting. And obviously, if you can turn DeAndre Hopkins into a mega stud, you should. But I, I don't know if that's something that people would even want to do because he's just getting so many targets and so many catches from game to game. Why isn't he just a mega stud? Is he not just isn't this, isn't he just a star? I mean, why he is? He he's absolutely right. a fantastic player, and the yeah. the target volume I'm surprised by. 
but I'm not surprised by the production that he's putting up. Now, maybe a little I am because of the receiving yards, especially today. 159 yards on 12 catches. It's good for him. Really good. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. We haven't even talked about DJ Moore. That's coming up. I mean, of course he's rallied. You know, he's got to talk about DJ Moore, that penalty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank goodness we don't get points for stupidity. <laughs> Uh, amazing game, Carolina and Atlanta. We'll talk about DJ Moore, Kyle Pitts, and some other winners when we come back on Fantasy Football today. Welcome back. A sick Heath Cummings is energized by two good games in a row from DJ Moore, who's actually started in 72% of leagues. He had 152 yards and a touchdown, including a 62-yard touchdown. He still had 90 yards before that, uh, but the very end of regulation, 62-yard touchdown to tie the game, and then Gets a penalty for taking his helmet off. They missed the game-winning kick, the game-winning extra point, uh, and they lost in overtime. But anyway, Heath, DJ Moore, Kyle Pitts, Rondale Moore, how many of them are you starting with confidence next week? DJ's at Cincinnati. Pitts has the Chargers. Rondale Moore, Seattle. I think with this volume, I'm starting DJ Moore regardless until multiple bad games happen again. Like I was ready to come here and say his five for 90 was a very disappointing game because PJ Walker missed him on two wide open deep shots. And he dropped a 20 yard pass, which I don't know if it was a drop or not. It might've been tipped, but he could have had a monster day before that big play at the end of the game. He just looks like a must start wide receiver again. And I'd just like to say thank you, PJ Walker. And thank you, DJ Moore, because I had some games and I have a couple still. I mean, you talk about the big points that were scored. There were some battles out there, like 155 to 154. I know that you and I, Adam, in the Superflex League went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, Are you going to win? Oh, yeah. That's been decided. Oh, but, damn it. Um, <laughs> it wasn't so much back and forth in the FFT League. It was just fourth, fourth, fourth. Um, Are but, you? Are you beat me in that league, too? Uh, well, not yet. You have three guys left. I'm up by 105. What the hell? Um I love ruining your night. Kyle Pitts, very encouraged to see him get nine targets, to see like him be clearly ahead of Drake Glennon. And I just wonder, like we go back and forth and it stinks, but tight end stinks. And maybe we were a little too quick to just say you can't start Kyle Pitts because we're pushing all these guys up as streaming options that we're hoping they have a day like Kyle Pitts has now had a couple of. Um, so... It, Somewhat encouraged by him. I won't start him with confidence, but he'll probably be in my top 12. And I, I think, Dave, you can look up the snaps. It looked to me from what I saw of the Arizona game, like they played more. I mean, they played more A.J. Green because he didn't even play last week. And they played Rondale Moore more in the slot where he belongs and less outside. Yeah, let's see that. And he performed very well. Now, that may just be that the only time they threw it to him was when he was in the slot. I'm not sure. He played in the slot 59.4% of his snaps. Excellent. That's great. So definitely used him in the right direction. Hopkins was outside a lot more than in the slot. 15.7% in the slot for Hopkins. So Moore played a ton in the slot. Dorch, for whatever it's worth, on his few snaps, he was in the slot almost exclusively. So that's a plus for Moore. But Moore's catch and run touchdown, there were broken tackles on that play. I mean, it was more like missed tackles. But that's that's kind of what tackles. he's supposed to be, right? It, that's what he's supposed breaking to Breaking tackles is what he's supposed to be. Bad defense helped him. It felt like the score was a little bit of an accident. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Rondell Moore just bounces right back into our hearts as a surefire number three fantasy wide receiver. I, I think I had him 32 this week. I think he needs to live somewhere in that 28 to 36 range most weeks, depending on how many guys we have on a bye. Okay. Well, that's a number three receiver. I'm not going to fight you on that. I'm getting really frustrated with fantasy football now that I'm checking my scores. Thanks, Heath. I mean, come on. I I played against Deontay Foreman, Travis Etienne, and A.J. Brown in a league. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, that's, that's, not, that's not fair. That's not fair. I, I think in the Super I don't know Flex why my league, violin sounds like a horn, but there it is. You had Derrick Henry and DeAndre Hopkins in the Superflex League. Yeah. I knew I had Mark Andrews, Chris Godwin, Russell Wilson. And yeah, like you got to read the rest of my team in that, in that stupid league. Uh, <laughs> that's pathetic. Um, Dave, your winners are Deontay Foreman and Justin Fields, who we already talked about, and Greg Dulcich. Dulcich, 51% oh. roster going into a bye. Would you rather have Dulcich or Pitts rest of the season? Dulcich at 87 yards and an almost touchdown. I am tempted to say Dulcich over Pitts because I'm not sure how many more games Kyle Pitts is going to have with nine targets. Although I'm excited with Pitts 
evolving into more than just a touchdown or bust tight end, which is what I was calling him this week. But I liked Dulcich as somebody who was going to be a bigger part of this Denver offense. And their offense was tragic in the first half. And when they got Dulcich going in the third quarter, everything started to open up a little bit more for the Denver Broncos. So I think he's going to be a big part of what they do moving forward. We know that Albert O, forget about it. He's he's O-U-T out of the picture in Denver. Dulcich is going to be a, a full-time tight end. And I would expect him to live in that better than 10 PPR point range. And it's a tight end who can get you yardage and touchdowns potentially every week. He's not going to be a guy that's going to leave you with two catches and 12 yards anymore. I think they like him. They draft him for a reason. I like his matchup against Tennessee when he comes back from the bye, along with Las Vegas. And then Carolina after that, three great games in a row following the bye he's worth hanging on to. All right, Greg Dolce. We have a pretty good waiver wire setting up here. You know, three of the players we talked about just now, Rondale Moore, Justin Fields, and Greg Dolcich are all rostered in about 50% of leagues. Rondale Moore is 56%. So, you know, maybe we have a running back to pick up in, in uh, Los Angeles for the Rams. Maybe we'll talk about that um, as we get into the losers. And we'll go to the losers right now. And, Dave, your losers are the Jets running backs, Cortland Sutton and Deontay Johnson. We'll talk about the Rams running backs when we get to Heat's losers here. But Jets running backs, Sutton and Deontay Johnson. I was so excited to see how this Jets run game would look. And when I say excited, I mean nervously worried about those running backs without Brees Hall there. James Robinson played 21% of the snaps. Michael Carter played 55% of the snaps. Ty Johnson played 33% of the snaps. What? Is it a three-headed monster now in New York's backfield? And if that's going to be the case from game to game, dude, I don't know if you can trust any of these guys moving forward. The offensive line wasn't good. These running backs weren't very good. They were taking on the Patriots and that run defense, you know, you knew, I should say, that they were going to bounce back after Chicago. I do not feel good about any of these guys. They've got the Bills next week and then a bye after that. I think in redraft leagues, I, I wouldn't blame you if you dropped Robinson and Carter, but I wouldn't tell you that you could easily do it and you won't miss them the rest of the year. But I don't know what they're good for other than bench depth at running back. I wonder if their inability to run the ball successfully today is a good thing for Garrett Wilson. Of course it is. Oh, yeah. We finally saw Zach Wilson throw the ball 40-plus times. He hates Elijah Moore's guts with a passion. So, I think Elijah Moore hates him, too. Yeah, uh, maybe they'll trade Here's him com- somewhere. Here, uh, here is coming after the game. Yeah. It's funny. Um, <laughs> so maybe maybe there's a bright side. I, man, what a day for Tyler Conklin. Yeah, Tyler Rick, Conklin. Rick Spielman knew it. I don't know how many of you watch our show Sunday mornings on CBS Sports HQ, but Rick Spielman, the former Vikings general manager, was on with us, and he gave a sleeper pick for fantasy. He's starting to get into fantasy now, and he said Tyler Conklin, and he drafted Tyler Conklin. He knew what he was all about, and sure enough, Tyler Conklin with a monster game. Again, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm so excited about Conklin. That I'm going to get him and hold on to him for the matchup against Buffalo, and then the buy after that. But it was a good game for him. Wilson is still uh, Wilson is still such a work in progress as a quarterback that it's hard to feel much about his his game. 20 of 41, 355 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. One of those interceptions was the most pathetic looking INT that you'll ever see. He's trying to throw the ball away. He's mastered that, by the way. He's mastered running all over the place and then throwing the ball out of bounds, except on this play when he threw it down the sideline and it was picked off. He's he I, I worry about what it means for Garrett Wilson moving forward as far as how many games he'll have with over 100 yards. But if they can't run the ball, they are going to have to throw it more. And Wilson should be their target leader, at least among the wide receivers. Maybe not overall because Conklin had 10 targets on Sunday. Yeah, it was a good one for uh, Conklin and for Garrett Wilson. And believe it or not, in fantasy for Zach Wilson, who scored 20 fantasy points. But yeah, he, he certainly struggled, made some just terrible plays. Cortland Sutton, what the heck, man? Uh, one catch for 13 yards on four targets. That's now three straight games with 23 or fewer yards. Three straight games with 5.3 or fewer PPR fantasy points. And his first five games, you know, he was on pace for like 1,500 yards almost. Yeah. So now they're going into their bye. And do you have any faith in Cortland Sutton to turn things around? No, he's another player that I, again, you don't have to drop these guys, but you might want to consider it because oh. there's nothing you can do out of it. Heath, Jerry Judy's the one. 
in that offense right now. That was you the can, believe it or not. Believe it or not, Jerry Judy is the best receiver on the Broncos. I will believe it because he's moving much better than Cortland Sutton. He's getting more targets from Russ. We Last week, we could dismiss it because it was Brett Rippon. This week, it's Russell Wilson, and Wilson started to play better in the second half. Sutton had an ugly drop in the game. I, I feel a little bit better about Judy more so than Sutton moving forward. And I think Dulcich kind of fits into this conversation, too, because he can move better than Cortland Sutton can right now. I, and he's going to start getting some more targets than Cortland Sutton could get. So, no, I, I, I'm not saying that he's a spike cut or a must drop or anything like that. But you will see Coral and Sutton drop, certainly in some 10 teams. I think you just got our roles confused, Dave. I'm the one who trolls Adam. You should not be talking about dropping Coral and Sutton. We can't pile on. <laughs> At least I traded him in one one league. <laughs> I mean, it's bad, you know. I you know I think <clears throat> I think one of Wilson's problems, honestly, is that he just kept looking for Sutton over and over again. And what happened at the beginning of the game? First pass of the game was for Sutton. Bad throw. Second possession of the game, throws covered. Sutton's covered. He throws an interception. And then after that, you know, finally get some other guys involved here. So deep ball to Hamler, lots of Judy, lots of Dulcich. Mm -hmm. And he started playing. Judy gets open. Sutton Judy have, gets like, open and Dulcich gets open. I mean, Sutton will have some good games. He's not, he's, he's not this bad. You know, I'm not dropping him. But uh, in Tennessee, Las Vegas out of the bye, those are great matchups. Hopefully one of those two games can be good. You might need a guy like Cortland Sutton. You might be happy that he's on waivers if somebody drops him. I'm not dropping him, but obviously I, I don't have nearly as much faith in him. And I, I try to sit him now if I can. I'll definitely sing him next week during the bye. Cor Cortland Sutton or Michael Pittman rest of the season? Ooh. Pittman and PPR. I think I have more hope for Sutton. I'm not answering. I have no idea. Um, Deontay Johnson. Adam, we don't either. <laughs> Deontay Johnson, 47% started. Nine he just can't do anything with his targets. Like, ever. I know. <laughs> it's so frustrating. You drop him going into the bye? You could. He's another one that's on that list. But but so here's the thing. You think about what the why do you have these players on your team? You you have Corlin Sutton because you've seen him at least have some big games and get you out to 15 plus PPR points with Russell Wilson at quarterback. We haven't seen squat from Deontay Johnson except for one game and was Pickett even the quarterback for that game? I think it was Trubisky or maybe it was the game where they each played a half. I don't remember off the top of my head. I could look it up if you wanted me to. No, now I'm kind of want to. No, no, not interested. He's been crap. He hasn't scored a touchdown. His yards per target is he's going to score eventually. Many His big game was against Cleveland in week three, 11 targets, eight catches, 84 yards. We would, we would wish upon our, favorite stars or something like that. It was all Trubisky in that game. Do you think, drop Deontay Johnson? I absolutely would consider it, and I would drop him before Cortland Sutton. I'm I'm not planning on dropping either one of them. We can just hang on to these guys and enjoy the memories. You might need them. That's the thing. You know, you never, you get injuries. Yeah, there's no I, wide receivers that. Well, I just, I don't. I, look, I, I'm sorry, but on my waiver wire this week, who was I picking up? I, I was... Too slow to pick up Darius Slayton. He was the best guy, you know, and I picked up Elijah Moore. I thought Elijah Moore, they're going to throw, the, you know. I have a lot more leagues where I have more running backs than I can start than I do where I have more wide receivers yeah. than I can start. Same. Um, so there That's is a fair. wide receiver problem. I, I would just say I don't know that the out leak is any more bleak currently for Cortland Sutton or Deontay Johnson than it was just two short weeks ago for DJ Moore. Yeah, it's a good point. All right, Heath, let's go to your losers here. You already talked about the Colts pass catchers. Hold Darryl on a Sanders. second. Wasn't there a quarterback change that helped DJ Moore? Yes, yes but we the would answer have, is none yes. of us would have said that PJ Walker was going to be the thing that saved DJ Moore. Anybody would have been Walker better than Baker Mayfield. There isn't a quarterback change coming in Denver unless Russ gets hurt, and there isn't a quarterback change coming in Pittsburgh. But pick it, I forward. do think that there I, – I find it more likely – that Russell Wilson's going to be play better than he has because he's going to get healthier as the season goes on. And Kenny Pickett's going to improve because he's a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and it's going to be great for Jerry Judy and George Pickens. Look, Sutton, Sutton has had five good games. You know, it may have been five in a row and now three bad ones in a row, but he's had five good games where you would never would have even considered dropping him. So, yeah, I'm not dropping him. Um, Again, for the third time, I'm not saying you should drop him. I'm saying yeah. you could consider dropping him. I would not. I mean, in a 10-team league, maybe, but... Maybe, yeah. 
All right, uh, Daryl Henderson and Irv Smith are losers for you, Heath. And Henderson, uh, second fiddle to Ronnie Rivers today, and tough matchup anyway. But Henderson and Irv Smith, drop them. Um, definitely Irv Smith. Yes. Uh, and in, in fairness, the matchup, the matchup did pay off. Um, they they got a touch tight end touchdown in that game. <laughs> it just wasn't Irv Smith's. So um, but it's just like it's four targets almost every week now, and that's we can do better than that. As bad as the tight end position is, we can do better than that. And um, I I don't I th- I guess I'd probably drop Henderson before I would drop Sutton and Johnson. But again, that's more because I feel like my rosters have a lot more running backs on them than they do wide receivers. Um, and I don't really know that anyone is going to be able to run the ball well for the Rams. That's kind of how I feel about the Washington offense too. Like, I just don't know if better than three and a half yards per carry is possible. Mm -hmm. And then if he's going to share as well, well, no, thank you. Yeah. And Kyron Williams lurks too. We don't know what his role will be. Are you guys passing downs back? Are you picking up Ronnie rivers? I swiped him before the game in a few leagues because there was some reports on Twitter that he was leading off the, running backs in their drills pregame. And I'm pretty disappointed in what I've got from him. But it was the 49ers. I kind of expected him to I did, barely started him. Um I didn't expect him to have a good game against San Francisco. Right. And uh Tampa Bay is next. What do you think? Are you gonna leave about him on waivers or are you gonna drop him? I I mean well any running back that's that's gonna be in line for 12 touches has to be rostered. But I agree with Heath. I, this is this is an ugly offense. The O line isn't. Uh, the O line actually blocked pretty well, all things considered today. But that's more for Stafford than it was for the run game. And once Kyron Williams gets back in the swing of things, I think he's going to be the one seeing targets and playing on third downs out of the backfield. That's bad for Henderson. It's bad for Rivers. Rivers probably isn't going to be worth much of a waiver claim. Okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will tell you about the almost touchdowns and then tell you about the games. Fantasy analysis on every game when we come back on Fantasy Football Today. All right, back. That was our last break. We're going to go through the games now. Almost touchdowns you need to know about. Um, Evan Ingram dropped the touchdown, but he was being held. He drew a penalty. Greg Dulcich got tackled at about the one. Led to a Melvin Gordon score. Dak Prescott overthrew Michael Gallup, and the end zone was wide open on the last play. Prescott did score a rushing touchdown on the next play. Uh, Tua had such a great game, um, but he could have had a slightly better game. Alec Ingold got a t- – well, Trent Sherfield got tackled. I thought he was in. I they thought so too. Down. Yeah, they ruled him down just short, and then Alec Ingold, the fullback, scored a rushing touchdown, which helped nobody. We had an almost touchdown from Terrace Marshall of Carolina. Um, Josh Reynolds almost had a deep touchdown. Tyler Lockett dropped a touchdown. He had two almost touchdowns. And a real one, right? And, and a, a real one. one. You know, Smith missed DK Metcalf down downfield on what could have been a touchdown, maybe. At least it was a big play. Terry McLaurin had an incredible catch at the one-yard line in their comeback win. Michael Pittman had a touchdown overturned, which led to a field goal. He was just short. And Marquise Goodwin had the ball knocked away from him in the end zone. Um, all right, so those are your almost touchdowns. Let's go to the games. Let's start with London. All right, we've got a decent finish there. Denver 21, Jacksonville 17. Heath, what do we got? I feel like we've covered the Broncos, except for maybe the running backs. Mm-hmm. Um, believe it or not, you need to hold both Latavius Murray and Melvin Gordon through the bye. No, I, I don't think you have to, but you should probably try. You should probably try to hang on. I think I like Latavius better. I like that he was in the game to kill the clock late. I I, I think, and he obviously had more carries than Melvin Gordon. Yeah, two games. Two, is that two weeks in a row? Is that more carries than Melvin Gordon? He's he's, yeah, I believe it's two weeks in a row. If uh, not, no, three. I'm wrong. No. Two of the last three. Two of the last three. Okay, yeah. thank you. Two of the last three, but I do know that Gordon hasn't even had sixty total yards in a game since Latavius joined Denver. Yeah, and we covered oh. Cortland Sutton because everyone covers Cortland Sutton these days. Thank right? you. Right, covers like uh, we've got a Geno good. Smith quote that I think you will enjoy, Adam. Okay. This game was for Ben McAdoo and Jerry Reese. They believed in me. No way. Oh, (laughs) the revenge game. I tell you, they're the fourth best team in the NFC, and they're good. They are a good 
well-coached team. They're very creative offense. They're not fourth best in the NFC. Oh, like, in the NFC yeah. overall? Eagles, yeah. I thought you said Niners for some reason. Eagles, no. Niners, Cowboys, no Seahawks. Yeah, any disagreements there? I don't even think that's a hot take. I mean, they're five and three. For First of all, I thought you were talking about the Giants in the NFC East and not the Seahawks at all. Uh, I think Seattle's a playoff team. They're good. Their defense is good, and they find Eagles ways to who? win on offense. Eagles, Niners, Cowboys, Seahawks. You forgot the Vikings. I think they're better than I, I don't really buy the Vikings. I, I buy the Vikings more than I buy the Seahawks. I was really impressed with the with the Seahawks today. And Gino is, is just having a terrific year. I, how about me in September <laughs> calling the Giants being six and two going into their bye? <laughs> and awesome. you still think they're gonna miss the playoffs? One hundred percent. That's gonna be hard, isn't it? Uh, they gotta be like they gotta be in a pretty good position. All right, anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. Uh, to the, what do you think about the Jaguars guys? Like they're, uh, they got the Raiders. So the Raiders are horrible defensively. Like, what do we think about Trevor Lawrence? Do we need to have him? Um, what do we uh, think about Christian Kirk? Kirk's a number three wide receiver. Yeah. Um, ETN's a must start running back. Ingram's yep. pretty close to a must start tight end. Also. Yep. And you and can't trust Lawrence. Maybe no, next week because of the buys. Be- Man, I don't know how much, like, he's got to figure something out in the next half of a season. Are we going to go into next year thinking that he is a franchise quarterback without any evidence? Yes, That's they're not going to go team. and spend. Well, let's put they, it this they way. They're will. not going to spend start heavy him, but... draft capital on a quarterback. They're not going to take one with their first round pick. He's going to get to start next year, yes. But do we have any when reason to believe he's going to become good? If he keeps throwing bonehead interceptions inside the five like he did today, then... There, but he there's going to be another quarterback. That. I mean, he, I, I look, he does a lot of good things. There's a lot to like about Trevor Lawrence. He's not there yet. He's not yeah, there. Yeah, but to Heath's last point. Year was a lost year for him. May, yeah, I agree with that. But to Heath's point, quarterbacks like this, when they're taking number one overall, they don't make these kinds of mistakes. They don't have this low of a completion oh. percentage every single week. I, I think that Lawrence definitely has room to be a better quarterback than what we've seen. But we need to see it. An easy matchup against Jacksonville should be exactly right. Look, this was a tough matchup. No one wanted yeah, to start him against Denver. Absolutely. So I yeah. think it's fair. I think it's fair to kind of get him to say that this wasn't the right thing to do or the right thing to the right time to use him, I should say. No, I call um, I'm calling them the buy low Broncos. If if you like a player, you buy low after he plays the Broncos. That's They're smart. Killers on defense. But but I don't I don't know if that necessarily means that we can see Trevor Lawrence suddenly ascend just because he's done playing the Broncos. No, like, I'm, I'm not trading talk, for him. But talk more who, Christian Kirk. who would you rather start next week, Trevor Lawrence or Derek Carr in the same game? Carr. Right. They're in the same game against each other. Um, I probably would lean. I think I would lean toward Carr as of now. I don't. What, what, what's the analysis? What's the selling point on Trevor Lawrence? The matchup against the Raiders. It's, yeah. it's all he's got because he doesn't look good. Otherwise, but what's the selling point on Derek Carr? Yeah, he doesn't look so good either. I don't know what happened to them today. I mean, that was that was uh, of a uh, great. He lost to a better day. quarterback. What'd you say? He lost to a better quarterback. He lost to. <laughs> oh God! That Minnesota whole Raiders 30... offense was a mess from the right. jump. We're gonna be have a two-hour show here, guys. Minnesota okay. thirty-four, Arizona twenty-six. Believe it or not, um, we talked Rondale Moore. We talked um, Eno Benjamin's droppable, even if James Conner doesn't come back next week. Mm. Oh, wow. Not he's put him on the list with everybody else as a, as a running back who I'm not in a in a rush to drop. I can't wait to drop him, but he's not going to be someone who I feel good about starting against Seattle. And I sure as hell won't feel good about him starting against the Rams or the 49ers in the two games after Week Nine. That's a good point. It's not a good not a good schedule, but I can't you can't like he's the starting running back. He had 13 touches. Um, I don't think you drop him. Connor comes. The thing back. that I, the thing that I'm kind of encouraged by is that he had seven targets. So he they were playing from behind most of this game, most and, of the season. And yeah. So if they're playing from behind, even when Connor comes back, I think he's got that role. And so he he might be he might be four carries for 15 yards, but he might have four or five catches, and maybe that's 30 yards on a better week. And that's a bye week replacement running back in PPR. He's, he's a bench running back. Hmm? 
Anything for the Vikings? We don't really ever talk about Kirk Cousins. I mean, does he take him over Tom Brady at this point? I feel a lot better about him than Brady right now. I think those two for me are probably matchup dependent each week. Okay, because let's see. It's three straight games with 20 or more, four out of five, five out of seven with 20 or more fantasy points. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't have these blow up weeks yet. But if know. I hadn't if I had given up on Brady, then I would definitely like Cousins more. But I'm still holding out hope. Uh this was his highest scoring game of the year. And I I you know, he did have the rushing touchdown, but he also came off the bye. So I'm hoping, you know, he talked about it. Cousins talked about it how he wasn't, you know, super comfortable in the system yet. He thought it was a few weeks ago he said, you know, he's not where he was this time last year in a familiar system. So maybe he'll just continue to get comfortable. All right, let's go to our next game here. Atlanta 37. Oh, the game of the week. Yeah. Atlanta 37, Carolina 34, which I had made this call. Um, Heath, what do you got on this one? It was a fantastic call. Uh, Tyler Algier is going to be fantasy relevant rest of season. Nope. Don't believe it. No way. You don't believe that. I I just won. I'm, like Caleb Huntley had 16 carries in this game. Yeah, he had a good game. Yeah. There's room for Cordero Patterson to come back and see 15 touches a game, and Tyler I. Algiers' role did not really change. Yeah, but th- that doesn't make me want to use him in fantasy. That makes me want to have him as an insurance policy for Cordero Patterson. And not a good one, because Huntley could get in there and be the guy instead of Algier. They face the Chargers next week? Yep. And then the Panthers. You think they can score against the Panthers? And then the Bears. <laughs> and then the Bears. It's a great schedule, but I think Patterson comes right back and takes over. I don't think Algier or Huntley have played well enough in these last four games to earn a significant share. Where are we at on DJ Moore rest of the season? At worst, a flex, if not a number two fantasy receiver. The correlation between quarterbacks cannot be denied. I think the other half of it is the correlation between no Christian McCaffrey. Yep. That's a yep. big deal for him. There's That's fair. Like, I thought it was pretty clear that Christian McCaffrey was the best player on the team and DJ Moore was the second best player on the team. Getting rid of Christian McCaffrey and Robbie Anderson makes it to where no one, even Ben McAdoo, can have any doubt who the best player on the team is. <laughs> yeah. I, his target share was about 3% higher last year without McCaffrey. If you remove the games that McCaffrey left with injury, just the ones he either didn't play or played in full basically. And so um, it's much higher now, much bigger gap now, but it's a big deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, would you be looking at Cincinnati, Atlanta ball, whatever I'm, he does have Denver at one point, he has some good, some bad matchups, but forgetting about that, would you be looking to sell DJ Moore or just hold on to him? I'm, I'm pretty pot committed at this point. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> you you will hold on to him. I think he's going to be tough to sell high on. Because everybody's going to remember how bad he was with Baker. And a lot of fantasy managers are going to fear that they've already missed out on the two best games that DJ Moore is going to have. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's a, maybe it's actually a buy low based on perceived value. Heath, I think you're muted. I definitely was. I, yeah. Is it that much different than Jerry Judy? Who would you rather have? I'd rather have DJ Moore. I'd rather have DJ Moore as well. Would you rather have DJ Moore or Brandon Cooks, who, thanks to a 44-yard catch in the final... 100% move, DJ Moore. Yeah. Ask me on Tuesday at 4.05 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. Is there, a, is there a landing spot besides the Packers that would change your mind? I, I don't know. I don't know how every team in the league views their receivers and the teams that are trying to compete who need a, who need a receiver. Like if, if he goes to the Rams, I'm not going to get more excited about him. I understand that. But look, we didn't think the Chiefs needed a receiver. And then they go out and they acquire Kadarius Tony. But I didn't I don't really like that move for Kadarius Tony this year either. No, I don't necessarily like it either, but they still went out and made the move to get Tony. And you know what? It might take one week for you to change your mind on that. We have yeah, to wait and see. Yeah, the thing about Tony is uh Juju's on a one year deal. Is MVS right. on a one year deal? Oh, if it's a move for the future, it makes no, sense it's, to the world. He's not. No, I, I said this that Juju and McCole Hardman are in kind of Hardman. Right. That's what it was. Right. right. Uh, MVS. Uh, they, they could get away from MVS after this year. It's just going to cost them some salary cap space to do it. All right. Moving Baltimore. on. To Dallas 49, Chicago 29. What if he, what if Cooks goes to Baltimore? Is that so bad? It'd be great. Uh, Dallas 49. Better than Houston. 29. Believe it or not, Khalil Herbert is the best Bears running back rest of season. This feels a lot like. 
the Cowboys offense. Because Herbert, to me, is just he's more explosive. He's more fluid of a running back than David Montgomery. But they like David Montgomery. And even in a game where I, I think Herbert had the hotter hand, guess who led the way in snaps for Chicago? You already know the answer if I'm saying this. Montgomery. Montgomery think, believe it or not, who's, who's the better one rest of the season? I'm going to say Montgomery because he's getting the work on third downs and inside the 10. I will too, but it's really, really close. And I could, this is one where I could definitely change my answer next week. Yeah, but we need we need Matt Eberflus to change his answer for it to really come into play. Now, here's the question. Do you try and trade? Do you overpay for Khalil Herbert, hoping that he eventually becomes the main guy in that run game? No. I don't think so either. So what are we talking about here? I've got a lot of Khalil Herbert, but I think maybe um... – like, I don't know if you have to overpay, but. Well, most people who have Khalil it, Herbert. It matters gonna... to the Montgomery manager when they're deciding whether they're going to start him moving forward. Sure. Yeah. But the, the people who have Herbert already know that he's certainly one injury away, but also maybe one or two bad games by Montgomery away mm-hmm. from being the guy that gets 60% of the snaps in Chicago. Montgomery did fumble today, and so did Herbert, but he was down. He almost fumbled. It was It was overturned. Um, I think Montgomery fumbled, right? Yeah, he, he did. That yeah. was the play that so, you know, Parsons returned for a touchdown. And oh, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I look. I have two leagues where I have both of them. And as if I had to set my lineup right now for next week against Miami, I would put Montgomery in. But I disappointed because obviously I want yeah I want more Khalil Herbert. How about Mooney, man? Fifty eight percent rostered, seventy yards, caught all five of his targets, and that's now five straight games with at least fifty yards. But still, no I liked him. Counts. Liked him as a number three receiver to just pluck off the waiver wire and put on your team. But well, that, the target share is a, is a questionable thing. The fact that he's not getting eight, nine, ten targets per game. Uh, all right, so I guess we talked about him on Tuesday. Uh, Prescott with a great game, twenty nine fantasy points. I don't know anything here for the Cowboys. Like keep drop or hold Michael Gallup. Drop. You can drop him. Hey, I, I'm happy that Schultz had a good game. Yeah, me too. I was not, I was not sure what we were going to get out of him, but I, I think that Dak impacts Schultz. This is the second game in a row where, hey, he's had at least twenty percent of the target share. Yeah, it's good. Dak likes him. That it was it was Dak national tight end day for for Dak. Still, a week later, he just kept throwing his tight ends. Twenty six percent target share for for Dalton Schultz. So he might be slow. But he, if you're getting work, that's opportunity. That's what matters. Hopefully it keeps up. All right, Heath. This was a shocker, if, even for Raiders haters. Saints 24, Raiders 0. And the Saints had the ball for almost 35 minutes. What's our believe it or not for this crap fest? I mean, I guess the believe it or not is, believe it or not, the Saints defense got healthy and they're really good again. Did they get healthy? They got healthier. They, they got a dig Debo back. Right. No Lattimore. Still no Lattimore. I didn't watch enough of this game to know what the pass rush looked like for them. But I do know that Carr got sacked four times. Four times. So they clearly got some pressure on Carr. They picked off Carr. My hunch, I I didn't see enough of the game to really know. Yeah, can we do a different one? Can we do a more fantasy one? More offense one? Um, there's nobody, I mean, what are you going to do? Josh Jacobs fooled you. <laughs> Juwan Johnson fooled you. Devonte Adams, fooled Devontae you. Adams fooled you. Derek Carr fooled you. Like the one I wanted to do is believe it or not that Andy Dalton's a better quarterback than Derek Carr, but you were going to get mad at me for that one. So I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, wait, so I got one. Believe it or not, a player who has seven or fewer targets in four of his last five games cannot be considered a must start wide receiver. But Olave? Yeah. It depends. Um, if it's seven targets per game and it's Gabe Davis, then we always <laughs> consider him a must-start wide receiver. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love Olave. He's a, clearly a must-start, but he does have seven or fewer targets in four of his last five games. Two of them he, he briefly left with an injury, but I think it is worth pointing out that you know he's not getting fed. When, when Dalton's been their quarterback, he's not getting fed the targets like he was with Winston, except for last week. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, he may be a, more of a low-end number two than the high-end number two we uh, viewed him as this week. Okay. 
I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bounce back game coming. Yeah, I expect there will be. Yeah, Ravens this week, Steelers week after that. All right, Taysom Hill with a decent game. About Bye, eight Chris points. Olave. Bye, Chris Olave. Okay. Miami 31, Detroit 27. Um, believe it or not, DeAndre Swift's going to be a bust, even if he stays healthy. How much of this was Detroit just trying to ease him back in? I have no freaking idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, he played 52% of the snaps. So right off the bat, that makes you think, okay, they're definitely not treating him with kid gloves. Played eight of 10 snaps on third and fourth down. He played half of their six snaps inside the 10. I think he got a little unlucky with the touchdowns and they didn't run the ball very much. Well, today. I mean, he scored one touchdown on 10 touches. That's, that's almost lucky. Sure. Yeah, sure. And he's not, the was not bad. Hey, no matter what, he's not going to be the goal line back. It's very clear. It's Jamal Williams. At least the catch for a touchdown. He had right, seven so yards out frame it again here, and let's let's answer the question. Believe it or not, block. DeAndre Swift's going to be a bust, even if he stays healthy. Based on the ADP, I think the answer is yes. I'm going to say no. I think he's too talented. They got to get Swift him or Taylor. Touches. Ooh, my wife just said she's really into the new Taylor Swift album. For those of you curious, it's I'm fantastic. Take, oh, all right. I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take Taylor. I think I'm going to take Taylor too. And we're talking about Jonathan Taylor might not might not be a top twelve running back. Right, yes. but Swift Swift was drafted in the second round. I think he'll be like a like a late second round pick. Mm, lower, maybe lower. But amongst running backs, he'll be like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe. Slight bust, slight bust. The problem is that he's been passed by ETN. Yep. And Ken Walker. All the other rookies. Yep. Probably Damian Pierce in most people's eyes. Yes. Yes. Um. So, yeah, that, that that's tough. Yeah, it is, it's how many more 100 yard amazing. games is DeAndre Swift going to be able to put together without breaking a bunch of. 40 plus yard runs and he does that not enough and not on sunday against the dolphins all right well he had you, five we games. can call him a number two fantasy running back i'm good with that i am number two though because you could also call like you know deontay foreman a number two running back but of course Swift is in a different not all number two running backs are created equally all right um how about what do you guys think about him on with St. Brown? Uh, you know, not a bad game by any stretch. Seven catches for 69 yards on 10 targets. We're going to excuse some of the previous games because he barely played, but is he still the player we saw in the first two weeks of the season or is St. Brown, like St. Brown or Olave rest of the season? St. Brown. Ooh, Ooh fight. <laughs> <laughs> I like the target volume for St. Brown. I think he's the number one receiver in this offense. Uh, like New Orleans, they're going to play from behind. Unlike New Orleans, there's a chance that somebody else comes back for the Saints that could put a cramp in the uh, the target volume for Chris Olave. Who plays first, Jamison Williams or Michael Thomas? I don't know if either one of them are going to play, to be honest with you. Yeah. All we right. might be waiting until 2023 for that. Uh, real quick on this one. It, it, let's assume Cooper Cup is healthy, not going to miss any games. Name the wide receivers you would take ahead of Tyreek Hill in PPR. Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Oh, what, what about Hill over Jefferson? It's I any, any love for that? Yeah. You can make the case for that, sure. <laughs> I, I, I mean, care, but they're both amazing. Yes. All right, Philadelphia. And gosh, how many underthrown deep balls is Tyreek Hill going to catch this year? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I got I to bring up Hawkinson, guys. He only had four targets, but he turned it into 80 yards. So it's good. And he bad. had a long catch and run with a broken tackle that we shouldn't expect every week. Yeah, I, I might drop him even after I have him and Schultz in a league and I like Schultz better. Oh, you might be able to get something for Hawkinson. Yeah, nobody trades. trades. It's, it's it, you might be able to get a bench player in exchange. Uh, maybe. All right, I'll try. But uh, see if you could turn him this. into Cortland Sutton. There you go. Uh, to, I can't do, do that, that Dave. Dave. I have scored. Because you <laughs> have something already in all your list. Yes. All right, Philadelphia 35, Pittsburgh 13. Um, believe it or not, George Pickens is droppable. Another player that I don't want to drop, but I would. 
We're dropping a lot more players than we're adding this week. Well, I know. So that that's actually kind of a good thing, I think. But I'm not going to feel good starting Pickens. Just like I'm not going to feel that good starting Deontay Johnson. And they're both going into their bye. So that that's, you know. Can you really rely on either of these guys for consistent production? Three targets for Pickens. How strange. No. no. Gross. Um, Miles Sanders. Like, I don't even know. He's a weird one. He's got a not an ideal role, but good enough. What do you think about Miles Sanders rest of season? Somewhere in between DeAndre Swift and Deontay Foreman. Okay. He's a number two running back. Closer to Foreman than Swift. Agreed. And- Devontae, who's more valuable, Devontae Smith or Miles Sanders? I think it's, I think it's, I think I want to say Sanders because they're both going to be volatile, but at least with Sanders, he's the lead running back on an undefeated team that wants to run the football and has a very good offensive line. All right. Patriots 22, Jets 17. They barely played their starters in the fourth quarter. This was the Heath game for Philadelphia because Gardner Minshew got in there. It was beautiful, too. Great completion to Zach Pascal. All right, what do we got? 22-17, Patriots over the Jets. Heath, you are muted. You are no longer muted. No, I was muted because I don't have a good one. Um, believe it or not, yeah. Garrett Wilson's going to be a number three wide receiver rest of the season. No, I don't believe it. Maybe. So you How think many games are start the Jets well? going to have where Wilson throws 41 passes? Can they run without Brees Hall? I think they're going to throw a lot. I mean, that's the thing. I, I called I called Garrett Wilson the most droppable player in fantasy. I changed my tune the second Brees Hall got hurt. It is all about Brees Hall. He was their best player by far, and they have to pass now. They have to. Yeah, He I, might I, have a lot of six-catch, 45-yard games. That's probably close to a number three receiver. I'd be like um, 55. I don't, there's no reason to expect him to be that inefficient. He's really, really good. It's it's about the quarterback. It's not the talent. He could be on almost any other team in the league, and I'd be more excited. Uh, let me see. What's his route? He's 74% rostered, 32% started, 115 yards on seven targets for Garrett Wilson today. Garrett Wilson or George Pickens rest of season. The... Wilson doesn't have as many people to contend with for targets. So I suppose yeah. I would say Wilson to that. Wilson has two more games against the Bills, though, and a bye. <sighs> Heath, I don't yeah, know. but the Steelers have some tough games. games. <laughs> Not the Bills, though. I mean, uh, the Bills are tougher for running backs and receivers, I guess. But all right, uh, let's talk about Ramondre Stevenson. Is this guy better than Jonathan Taylor rest of season? He had seven catches. He has 15 catches in his last two games. I think you can make the case in full PPR. I'd put him between Taylor and Swift. He's going to be very close to Jonathan Taylor because he's playing a lot. Harris seems to be mostly an afterthought in the offense. He, they both, eat, they each had two snaps inside the ten. The Patriots had twenty-one third or fourth downs. Stevenson played on seventeen of them. Do we worry about Ty Montgomery coming back and no. messing that up? I don't. I don't think we worry about it too much because Ramondre Stevenson's done such a good job. Yeah. He's he's their best running back. Okay. Well, he's he is a superstar. He right left now. and came yes. back in this game too, by the way. I don't know if you mentioned that. No, I didn't. That. So now yeah, he's he left and came 19, back. 19 and a half or more PPR points in five four straight games and five out of six. It's another guy. I mean, it's just amazing. The, the running backs were emerging. First and second year running backs were emerging right now. Tennessee 17, Houston nothing. Oh, no. Houston, what, 10? They, they got 10. Okay. I forgot. They touched on catch for Damian Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. After that, Brandon Cook's 44 yard catch with 41 mm-hmm. seconds left gave him a good game. But what do we got from this one, Heath? Well, I was going to say, I mean, we just stick with the theme. If Brandon Cooks doesn't get traded, he's droppable. I think he's droppable. I, I, I don't know. Dropped. Oh, no. No, he's not. I got to tell you, I've we've probably named six or seven players that I would drop before Cortland Sutton. Right, yeah. right. All right, so who's more droppable? Brandon Cooks, if he doesn't get traded, or Garrett Wilson, or George Pickens? Pickens. I really like Pickens. 
I think I've kind of had it with Brandon Cooks. I think I would drop Cooks before Pickens. I'll tell you who's drop. I'll tell you who's droppable, man. Robert Woods. Yeah, seventy four percent. It was so easy to get away from him with Willis under center, though. And obviously, Willis didn't play good enough to keep the job from Tannehill. Look at these. But numbers. Woods, Woods is still droppable. Don't don't get it messed up. Look at these numbers for Malik Willis: ten passes, fifty five yards, twelve rushing. He accounted for sixty seven yards and an interception. And they won the game. Unbelievable. All right. Next up is Washington 17, Indianapolis 16. Uh, believe it or not, Antonio Gibson's a top 24 running back. In PPR, I think you can make the case for that. He can be in that conversation of being like right at 24th because he's the one that's going to play a good amount when they're trailing. We kind of thought that that would be the case. But the fact remains that it was still a three-headed monster. No running back for Washington played even 40% of the snaps. But Gibson's been doing well the past few weeks. So if you had to give the nod to one commander's running back, it's Gibson anytime they're in a game where you think they're going to be trailing. And I kind of think that's going to be just about every single game for the commanders given their defense. Um, last week, they, they've they now won three games in a row, and he's had three, three, and seven catches. I'm not sure there's enough touches for him to be a top 24 guy, but he's definitely the best on the team, right? We'd rather have him than Robinson. Oh, for sure. I think so. As much as we want to root for Robinson, I think that Gibson's probably going to be better. In PPR, here's their, here are their next few games. Minnesota, I can't help but think they're going to be trailing against the Vikings. At Philadelphia, can't help but think they're going to be trailing yeah. against. You're going to like them though against Philadelphia. I mean, it's one thing to be true. Robinson, Either hell one. no. Either one. Gibson, probably more. Like they more. play Houston in Week 11. That might be a Brian Robinson game. Then All right. Another week after that. Terry McLaurin is revived. Cool story about him. He grew up going to Lucas Oil Stadium. He's an Indianapolis guy. He grew up going there, and I think he said, "This is my stadium," or so. This is my state. I whatever. When he made that big catch to set up the win. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I think we've kind of covered it. Yeah, we've covered it. San Francisco 31, Rams 14. Uh, believe it or not, Cooper Cup is the only Ram who is a must roster. Must roster? I don't believe it. I, do. I still oh, think Higby, Higby needs no, to be I'm, rostered. Forget Higby. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Yes, not believe that. Higby. Robinson is cuttable more so than Sutton. Might be more cuttable. Than, no, I don't who do you cut first, Allen Robinson or Deontay Johnson? Robinson. Why? I've seen Johnson be good more recently. I've seen Allen Robinson get a touchdown. That's true. And another game, he actually had two end zone targets in this game. One of them did yeah. not, he drew a pass interference, but this is At every some point they're game. going to stop doing that because it doesn't work. I don't know. He got he drew a pass interference that set up a touchdown. But he does have an Enzo target in every single game for what, for what it's worth. And he has it's, been good. It's totally silly. Well. And it, I don't know what good it does you to have those end zone targets if you're not going to catch them every other game or even every other other game. I guess he's done that. Yeah. I, I'm not sure who I would drop first between Johnson and Robinson. If Robinson makes – they both make me very frustrated. Bye week. He already had his bye, and Deontay's is coming up this upcoming week. But Yeah, maybe that's the tiebreaker. Are we worried about Higby here? He's got now 22 yards combined in his last two games. Yeah. Same. He's yes. It's a concern. Did Van Jefferson play? He did, I think. I do not think he recorded a season. McVay gave us a fool Jew on him. What was his full allotment of snaps? Regular snaps, he said. I'm looking up Van Jefferson right now. <laughs> and he played. 31 snaps. Yeah. That's enough to at least get a target. He didn't do that. He did not earn a target. Seattle 27, Giants 13. Somehow Ronnie Rivers earned four. Uh, believe it or not, Darius Slayton's going to be the best Giants wide receiver rest of the season. I hate jumping around from Giants receiver to Giants receiver. <laughs> so yeah. does Daniel Jones. We should have just yeah. ignored all of them, probably. It's probably the best move to ignore all of them. But I still like, I still like Wandale Robinson conceptually in the offense. 
Vegas knew that he was not going to catch a lot of passes today. Uh, it's good. It's three, weird three good games in his last four for Slayton. Three games with double-digit PPR fantasy points. You know, startable number three-ish receiver games at, at yeah. worst. It's fair to say that he's their number one receiver. Yeah, I think he is. But you know, next week, we, oh well, they're on a bye. Hopefully, this they trade is, for someone. They could, they could really use it. This is a fun fact from Adam Sheffer. For every game that Taylor Heineke plays at least sixty percent of the snaps and the Commanders win, he earns a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar bonus. Holy cow, that's awesome. Um, on the Seahawks side, how about DK Metcalf playing, playing very well? Yeah, it's incredible. Good for him. Down on 10 targets. Lot, you know, these guys came through. I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the Seahawks. They are, and Gino in particular. Terrific. Gino's really had three bad quarters since the 49ers game. And it was the first three quarters against Arizona. And, and I, I, I thought it was a little bit about them pressuring him, but it might have just been him being off. Because he really hasn't looked off the last two weeks. Okay, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, these guys are who they are. You got to keep starting Metcalf and Lockett, and his deep ball is just so good throwing the ball downfield. It's really impressive. Mm-hmm. He's been very accurate. He's been very good. Ken Walker almost had a dud of a game, late touchdown run. Yeah, in the last six minutes or so of the game, it was a very good one though. It was. He's he's so good. And I'll say last last thing here. I've always liked the Seahawks from afar. I love the fans. I always like Pete Carroll. And I still do, but it's pretty annoying to lose to him because he's like jumping up and down like he won the Super Bowl when they pick up a first down late in the game. It's like, all right, come on, man. Like just 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 take it easy. Yeah, you know, you know, he hit a referee. He hit a referee celebrating. It's like, come on, it's it's week eight. It's week eight. The old yeah. act like you've been there before. A I'm little sorry, bit. I'm sorry I, your team I, lost, Adam. No, I have no sour grapes. I'm fine with it. You know, I'm t- happy with six and two. Just, I used to not, I, I couldn't stand Brett Favre back in the day because Brett Favre would throw a touchdown pass in a 30 point game in week six. He put the one finger up and he'd run around the field like, oh, somebody please hug me, shower me with Gatorade. It's like, ah, it wasn't really for me. All right. Heath probably can't stand uh, my enthusiasm right now. He's too sick for it. So we will skedaddle here. We'll talk to you tomorrow with Beyond the Box score. We'll recap what's already a 14-0 game en route to a a 40-point game. (laughs) Calling my shot. Uh, Bills and Packers and much more. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night. Great job, Heath. Yeah, Heath. Way to go. Yeah.